Hey everybody, Doward here. It is Saturday, January 24th. And as you can see, I am about a month behind schedule. I still don't have the quad done yet. Uh, it's getting there, it's close. Uh, today's gonna be electronics. So there's nothing to be done but to keep on keeping on. So you see here, we've got the switch housing completely disassembled. I uh, got the buttons and all out. Did them up pink, a little Krylon set in black for plastic. And what we're gonna be doing is continuing with this rewire. Uh, you see I've snipped all the items out. I do have, you see I've got a spare one here, the spare wiring harness set up. It's all faded out and whatnot, but I'll be taking the switch, this switch out of, and soldering it in here. Uh, you can see how this comes apart, pretty simple. This unscrews and this comes up. You can kind of see the little flat piece at the uh, starter goes against it's this guy same thing with the front up here very simple setup you can see as you move this back and forth so all right gonna get to work on this so first thing i'm going to do is go ahead and disassemble this guy here and get these wire holds out of the way these are just hold downs for the wiring same deal here these just keep the wiring from getting up underneath here and getting pinched and i can remove the actual switch assembly switch housing, the switch assembly, you got one screw right here. Now in order to take this switch assembly off, you've got to pull the, this actual switch plastic piece straight out so that you can then wiggle this guy up and out, just like so. So now what I want to do is I need to keep track of exactly where the each of these wiring hookups go so that I make sure I solder them back in in the right order. And that's where I use the secret weapon, the smartphone. See, the entire idea here is that I can grab pictures of this kind of stuff as I go. Makes it super, super simple to put it all back together. And this switch is just a contact switch, so this should be, it should matter a little less as far as having this together. So now we've documented that, I can actually snip these guys all right off here. I'm going to snip them down here on the end so that I can actually desolder these things. Now as far as the starter button goes, you should have a really good view of this now. You should see there's a plate that sits there. The spring holds this away, and then when you touch it, it completes the circuit. So get the starter switch out. So you see this little post right here? That's what this uh, starter button actually sits on, rotates on, if you will. So we'll just pull that pin straight out. Now we can pull the button out. You can see how this works. This is the little center button piece. It goes right there. And then down here, this plate will just lift straight up. So the next thing we'll do is we'll disassemble the actual starter switch here, or the actual um, ignition kill switch. You can see the little clip right here. So this should just pop up. There we go. There's the switch out. You see the little spring here. There was a ball on this that goes into this bottom piece as a detent, just so that it stays in which position, whichever position you put it in. So I'll set all this off to the side. Nope, don't lose the ball. Set that down there. All right, now at this point, we can go clean our heat, our housing down. I'll go ahead and clean my contacts and all off here. Clean everything out real well. Now we should be able to desolder the switch, the switches, get everything out the way, and we can start reassembling a new one. So to remove the excess solder, I'm just gonna use my little solder sucker here. Be careful not to melt the sides of the nylon. All right, so now I'm just going to take this. Now I'm just going to take the switch here and just clean it down with a little little wire brush. Just kind of clean the excess of gunk out of it. All right, and now what we can do, we can actually go ahead and test this. The heat actually raised the contact pads inside of it. I'm just going to push them back in place. I'm curious to see what the inside of one of these looks like. So here's the inner workings of the headlight switch. See, there's not much to it. It's just a ball bearing detent, a couple little bus bars, and I've got these six pads. So what this tells me is I'm gonna have ground along one bottom side, and then what I'm gonna want is I'll have a single pad up top that'll be like low beam, and then I'll cover two of them, one with high beam and low beam, and one with high beam and one with low beam. And what I'll do is I'll bridge that connection for the low beam across here 
so that when I push it over, I have low beam, and then when I go to high beam, I have highs and lows together. So we'll go ahead and put this all back together. I'll make sure I keep my ball bearing detent in the right way. You see, this will just snap back in. And then once it's all back assembled, get that nice click. All right, so next up, we'll start soldering our buses and all on. All right, so you can see how absolutely ruined my old headlight switch was. Ugh. I mean, the ball in there is completely just rusted to nothing. It's just, it's useless. So I scavenged the nice good one off of the other one. That's why we scavenged the nice good switch off the spare parts bike. So we're gonna begin reassembly now of the switches. I'm gonna start with the um, engine kill switch. Let's see, I've got my nice pink switch here. Now, the way this guy works, see I've already popped one spring in place here on the edge. Another spring goes down here with a little ball bearing on it. You can see, oh, hopefully you can see, there's a little detent area right here. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna put this in here, squeeze it like so, and then I just want to push that ball down and clip it into its detent. So now it rolls back and forth, stays in place. Now we gotta put this side down, which is where the sort of little metal strap comes in. And in this case, it's I'm just gonna bend it a little bit more square. Sits on here, and then this guy comes in, clips down in place, and there you go. You've got another switch, nothing to it. So before I actually completely reassemble this, let's get this back out, because what I'm gonna do is put some dielectric grease on here. The reason for the dielectric grease is A, it acts as, well, as a lubricant, and two, this will keep moisture and whatnot away, which means I won't have to worry about corrosion on my connectors anymore. So we'll clean that up nice, we'll slide this back into position, and now I've got nice protected contacts. All right. All right, so that's the ignition, or the engine kill switch right there. That's ready to get bolted back into place. You see there's nothing to it. It just screws right back down, and I got a nice switch, switch housing. Of course, before I actually put it back in the housing, I want to go ahead and solder up my connectors. All right, next up, we got a starter, starter switch. Set this back in here, like so. Here's a little starter plate. This is what actually sits down in here, like so. All right, so the way the starter system works is this little plate just sits in place. You get a stud here that'll have one wire going to it, and then the plate itself will have the other wire going to it for the starter switch, where the uh, electricity passes through to activate the starter solenoid. Now this is electrically isolated by means of this little washer, fiberglass washer, and then another little washer right in there, I hope you can see. There you go. And what happens is when you push the button, this little stud touches that and bzz, you get electricity. Now, of course, the flip side of that, as you can see, is that you'll get all kind of oxidation on there. So, I'm going to clean this down, and that too will get a little bit of dielectric grease done on it. Now, I'm thinking what I may do is I'll go ahead and take my wiring, I'll push it up through here, through the hole, and then solder this in place so that I can set it down in there. Obviously, this is not going to fit through the hole once it's in there. So, I'll take my wiring, like so, feed it all through the hole. Plastic wiring harness through there. That should give me plenty of room to work with. Of course, I'm going to have to clean all these cables down. These two here go to my starter switch. These two go to the engine kill switch. And then these are the four wires to my lights. So these are the two I'm going to be concerned with to start with. I'm just going to clip the ends of these off just to remove any corrosion in there. And then we'll strip the wires back. All right, so I'm going to solder them up like so. Do them one at a time, of course. I'm doing there is that's a cold solder joint that's not going to fly but what i'm hoping to do since i don't have a third hand here though i totally could use one now that we have that one in place this one should be a little easier i'll use my belly to hold it a couple little flyaways in there i'll trim up but that should be a good solid connection that's warm <laughs> all right there's our completed solder connection so now what we can do is take this Beat it down into position. Let's go ahead and get our other pieces soldered up into place while we're at it. Strip a bit of wire. Seems like I gotta have it of cutting my wiring a bit too long. Alright, solder this bit down. Alright, now we just need to solder up our wiring or our uh, headlight. We'll do that, I need to go diagnose which wires are which. Alright, so for wiring or for soldering these up, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some solder to my wire. I'm doing here is pre tinning my wire. So 
So now I've got to decide which of these three wires are going to go where on here. 